Well, let's take this discussion further. For more, we're going to bring political analyst Professor Andre Duvenacher to weigh in on the ANC candidate list and other issues related. Prof. Andre, good afternoon and thank you for joining us on the SABC at this hour. Uh, good afternoon, Liesl. Nice talking to you. Prof, let's just look at um, what's emerging. The ANC-NEC list, who's in the clear, who's also been kept out. Talk to us about what you're observing, perhaps also the differences in that list over the years. Well, uh, maybe the starting point should be over the weekend, we saw uh, a survey done and the support base of the ANC is at its lowest level. It is at 39%. Now we know that within our list proportional system, it's in a way adapted currently, uh, the lists are very important. Therefore, the candidates mentioned are critical also for the success of the party. Now, if I look at the list, uh, it's an attempt to be representative in many ways, in terms of gender, in terms of different categories of society. But unfortunately, it seems as if there's also a category we can refer to as the corrupt. And there are many people with uh, corruption credentials that are also directly or indirectly part of this bigger system. And you can start off by people implicated by the Zondo Commission. Mm. Here we think about Betty Montage. We are talking about a lot of other people, Zweli Makize, who are out of the system, Zuma out, Esma Gishule out but some of the others are still in the system and i believe this is going to be uh, an impetus for conflict and violence and already we have seen that there is a huge momentum behind the mk party at the moment their support base according to the last brenthurst survey is on 13 percent but in kzn it's already higher than the ANC with a level of 25% uh, to the ANC 20%. So in that sense, I am concerned about the list. Will the list carry through in terms of support for the ANC? Prof, let's get into who has been left out. I mean, the ANC top seven flagging senior members um, who, who should have been removed from the party's national lists. Um, I wonder if we're looking at the implications as well from year and two, how this is also going to impact the election campaign. Could it lead to divisions within the NEC as well and the ANC um, discourage those who have been flagged from campaigning for the organization? I mean, talk to us about the reality, um, given what's um, been on earth through the list. Uh, when it comes to selecting people for a list and when it comes to politics in general, it's always a very complicated situation. It's not only about the merit of the individual, it's also about their support base, their representativity. So there's a combination of criteria playing a role. Now that is not the problem. The big problem is how consistent uh, was it applied in terms of the bigger criteria. And I'm back at the corruption criteria, the findings of the Zondo Commission. And it was absolutely uh, put forward by the ANC in its manifesto that it will fight corruption and that people should stand aside. That is now part of the ANC strategy for the last decade or more. And what is clear to me is that there is an inconsistency uh, for example, can you assess Gwedi Mantash differently from, let's say, Zweli Mekize? What is the reasons for accommodating Malusi Kigaba? What is Supra Muamupelu doing on these lists? If corruption criteria and implications in this regard are not important, uh, we can even take it to the highest level to the level of Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, implications in terms of the Pala Pala scandal. 
So uh, the ANC currently is an organization that is endemically corrupt and they cannot act against corruption. And the moment they are acting against corruption, then they start developing internal divisions like we have seen with the MK party. So, so that is an internal problem and I believe they do not have the guts to take the decisions necessary to make the organization clean from corruption. Prof, I just want to look at, I mean, closing, um, it's a twofold question just as we wrap up there, because I know there are lots of more questions and answers at this point. But in this analysis, I mean, concerns about the IC uh, list and, and the rules about the leakage. I mean, we saw over the weekend the unauthorized um, leaking of the party's candidate list for the upcoming elections. I wonder if this is indicative of, you know, or a reflection of the Electoral Commission to manage the electoral process, to safeguard it as being free and fair, um, contraventions of poppy, um, act as well what are you observing on that front and just in the in the same breath as we close i want to look at the retirements of um dr nkosa zana Lamini zuma and um Pravin Gordon. what impact is this also going to have on the movement at large well uh, liesel i think if there was an election where we need freeness fairness proper protocol proper operations then this is the 2024 elections and at this point in time, we cannot allow controversy to be part of the election, contaminating the election in terms of its freeness and fairness. I think it is unfortunate that the lists end up in the open. And I think the election commission should be very careful also in terms of their processes and protocols allowing political parties to become part of the process or leaving them out. We have heard over the weekend that the MK party said or persons, uh, spokesperson said that if they are not going to be allowed, they will burn the country to the ground. Now, this is not the type of thing we would like to see in a democracy. We want a free and fair election and we want an independent electoral commission that is effective and efficient and that can deliver an election result that is free and fair.